Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting and exciting video where I am introducing rivers in uh, URTS toolkit. Uh, so finally URTS toolkit is able to generate river patterns and fill them with water. Uh, rivers are going through various places of terrain like we see right here um, and they carve in uh, like a thin path of the river uh, and there are also merging points like that. So let's go firstly and take a look how these rivers looks like in game and then we will go through um, parameters how um, how rivers can be set in your DS. So let's click start. Okay, so I have here in my default location spawned my RTS camera and now there is this big river uh, which goes just uh, behind, behind the spawning point. And we can see here that um, it has this zigzag trajectory. Um, it has, I also applied um, very basic um, water shader, um, which is included already in Unity, it doesn't have currents currently, but, um, but um, uh, it basically has its pattern over the terrain. So this, this river valley is being carved by, um, by my new algorithm and it basically carves the path of the river. So rivers goes um, uh, for a very long distances. For example, like here, uh, we have river uh, submerging into the lake. Uh, there is a small branch here, but there is another branch which is coming out from the other side of the lake and continues to go uh, further through the mountains and um, basically they, these rivers can go uh, very very huge distances for example here we can see it comes to another lake and if we continue um, to that direction um, we should get it going further Oh, so you can see immediately that rivers goes um, very long distances and as I am regenerating terrain um, these rivers are being uh, being generated um, on a very very large scale. Um, the, the interesting thing is that if I come back uh, the rivers will be the same because I'm coming um, um, because they should be the same otherwise it would not make sense so here I am coming back now and I have this uh, river going through that hill and then as if I remember correctly there is another lake right there <coughs> and this river still crossing that lake and then I'm coming back to my home location where um, where I started and the river is the same here so this basically shows that rivers can be made on a procedural terrain which can go many many uh, kilometers around and um, this river, uh, river paths are being carved uh, correctly and properly. Here is another uh, thing, uh, this second merging branch which is merging um, at, at this point it's coming uh, to the other direction and here is it's starting to um, to split into uh, into much more branches and so on um, 
and here is um, here I can see the the end of the branch. So these branches are not going infinitely, but uh, at some point they are uh, they are stop uh, going somewhere. So reverse kind of um, are kind of interesting content in RTS. Um, they do. They doesn't look at the beginning that they would play a big role in RTS. It's more like at the moment it's like environment thing uh, to bring uh, reverse here. But from the other hand, uh, there is a uh, a role for reverse to play in real time strategy because, for example, if player uh, decides to move here. Uh, player needs to cross the river and there is no way to cross uh, so player would probably need to go many many miles around but there is no crossing point because um, uh, rivers cannot be crossed there so it would need to go all the way where river starts and uh, it's um, it would be impractical to go like that so Reverse adds another thing, a reason for to build bridges. So, in the future, I'm planning to to put this new feature uh, where player can build a bridge across the river and uh, units can cross through the bridge and uh, can move further into the lands. Um, so this uh, this could add some another. Uh, points for um, and purposes to to build up uh, real-time strategy games with larger variety. Another thing is that <coughs> reverse can um, can play some uh, something in uh, in a content like um, like a stories or something um, or or tales about. Um, about something where um, reverse are mentioned and so on. So uh, there are many, many different ways how to uh, use reverse in real-time strategy games and they are kind of playing some role there. So now I guess let's jump to another part and uh, let's stop here and let's go uh, ahead and um, check how these rivers are being generated okay so I can clean up here um, so there is a new game object inside environment it's called reverse and it has this reverse script being set so the, the key parameters here are uh, firstly, there is this origins, where uh, where developer sets um, uh, the final points of river merging, and as it uses diffusion limited aggregation, um, it uh, the fractals are keep building up uh, based on on these points. So river starts spreading from these points. And they, when they spread further out into the lands. Then there are some parameters like random speed, which um, uh, as uh, diffusion limited aggregation particle moves randomly um, in a plane, it, um, this, this random speed defines how uh, how much randomly it moves and then there is directional flow speed which is um, being used to uh, to move particle vertically um, along y direction so uh, flow if flow speed is uh, not zero particle doesn't move completely randomly it moves randomly but it also shifts towards uh, the lower y direction until it reaches one of these uh, points and 
as particle reaches one of its points, it becomes another point, and the, the fractal keeps building up uh, with all these branches and so on. Um, another thing is um, uh, some resolution things, how, how long these rivers can be. So, firstly, uh, there is this number of particles, which is set to be several hundreds, <coughs> so several hundred particles are being spawned and um, getting stick um, to, to make a contour of the river. And when there is this max movement steps, which um, tells how, uh, how far away a particle can move, um, Ha because not all particles can reach uh, these, these attraction points. So if particle moves uh, very, very long, uh, it could be better just to kill particle and to spawn a new one um, and continue with that. Then there is this, this just draws, these are just 400 values, and it just draws a basic contour of the... Uh, of the river, so it doesn't uh, show this all this zigzag trajectory and shape. This is why uh, I'm doing number of subsplits. So it uh, it takes this uh, uh, between different um, nodes. It splits um, into two, and it it does um, it does sixty four subsplits. <coughs> this number has to be. Uh, a power of two, and uh, as we see, it is it is like that right here. Then there is this. These parameters can be also useful. Um, it is uh, uh, world offset, which is being used um, at a final stage when um, when rivers are being created. Um, it's uh, it's made in in real world units. Uh, so, for example, here if we have uh, the first element zero zero, uh, the river uh, ending location would be zero zero. Um, the first river. So this is first river, second river, third river, fourth river, and there is eight rivers added at the moment. Um, so <coughs> this would give that. Um, but here, um, here goes how much to offset this, this part. So, and here it is, uh, so X and Y, how much to offset uh, over X and Y. But it's at final positions. And the, um, these things are basically just in, in relative space. It's, it's not in a final space. On the top of these ones, it's applied with world scale, um, which is, let's say, 1,000 at this point. So each of these numbers are being multiplied by 1,000, and then it becomes real world uh, scale. Um, so... Um, these, these numbers are quite interesting because it allows to uh, to play how how large are these rivers and um, and so on. Uh, then rivers are being uh, carved into terrain as a uh, as a height drop. So the terrain height from original value is being dropped uh, down to the fifty. And it's um, um, there is number of shore pixels how far away from the um, from the lines which are connecting the river pattern how far away um, the terrain should be dropped. So thirty pixels it means from the central part to the uh, to the edge there is thirty pixels constant. Uh, constant val valley width of the river, so um, so yes, this thing, and uh, 
yeah so basically i explained um all these parameters now let's uh let's take a look at, at a little uh um let's test a little bit for some of them for example here i have um world offset let's see i have 5000 and i have world scale which is 1000 so if i just reduce it um, let's say to 500 let's see and world scale um leave the same and let's see what happens so i go back to terrain and click clean because there is nothing uh, in in reverse so you uh, you do everything through here clean up and generate <coughs> And we don't have river anymore here, but we have river somewhere else, which uh, shows that river has uh, has moved. So there is this merging branch and so on. Uh, and here, here is the end, uh, which is uh, in our case um, five hundred and zero. You also probably noticed that it's it's probably um, the other way around, but it's actually it is not because there is world rotation, so it adds this kind of world rotation. How much to rotate the river contour around um, around zero zero position? So if you type zero here. Um, the river would be rotated uh, some other way around. So let's try and see what happens now. So yes, river has been rotated um, a different angle. So now the river goes that way. So it allows to to actually rotate and offset the the river pattern, um, so that we can uh, we can align how our rivers are visible. Now let's bring this back to minus one thirty five, and let's now reduce world scale to see what happens i reducing it 10 times and uh, let's clean up and generate again <coughs> okay so here we have starting to generate it's a little bit slower but Okay, so here we see what we have. Um, here is our first river, and it's being scaled down 10 times. What means that here is the end, and here is merging point of this second river and the main river, which we're going through all these lakes, and we never... Uh, when we were playing in the game we didn't reach so far it's probably it's um, this part is very very far it probably uh, need to go about 10 uh, terrain chunks from the from the beginning till we reached this um, so there is um, uh, this, riv this river is being scaled down, but it's just a first river. As I mentioned here, uh, there are eight rivers in total. So if we zoom out, we can see that here is the first river basin, and here is the, the second river bas base basin, um, and here is the third river, and it goes, um, goes on and on. So there are in total, there are uh, eight, eight rivers set here. Um, the, um, 
and each of them has their own branches and so on. Um, but when I'm uh, setting up scale 10 times larger, it's um, um, it sets the river to be uh, these rivers to be very very long and to extend uh, very far away from here. Um, okay, so let's now bring back things to their original values and um, let's test this number of subsplits. Uh, Actually, actually, before going to that, let's let me show something. Um, something about this value, number of particles, um, that it allows to reduce and increase the the length of these rivers. So let's let's look at this basin, at this uh, this branching river here. So if I change this one down to let's say 200, uh, number of particles in DLA should be diffusion limited aggregation should be smaller, and um, I should be able to. Um, <coughs> to have much much smaller rivers. Um, so let's see what happens if I clean up and regenerate it. Okay, so I'm starting to see that the pattern now is much shorter. It doesn't extend to uh, to there and this river has also shorter pa pattern and so on. Um, and if I increase, let's say, to 600, it might be a little bit slower. Save. And then on a terrain, clean and generate. Now it should be much longer. <coughs> okay, it takes a little bit longer time. So we can see that um, the, the rivers goes much further um, out from the starting point if I increase this, this value. Um, this river especially goes um, also quite far away. Uh, so all rivers are going much further out from their origin points, from their ending points, as we increase the number of particles. So, <coughs> so yes, let's bring back to 400 and let's uh, now bring back original scale And to do one more thing, one more test with uh, a number of splits. Um, so if we can uh, regenerate these rivers again, so we got back our usual pattern of that single river because another one is being zoomed out uh, so another one is probably several uh, terrain chunks away and here we have that our original path so we can see that it's it's nicely zigzag trajectory goes uh, all all the way through here but if I change this value to, let's say, uh, it has to be a power of 2. So, let's say, if I don't want to subsplit at all, um, what would be happening here? Let's clean up and generate. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so here we have um, our river, how it looks like without any subsplits. So it's it's very rough um, rough pattern. Uh, it it draws like uh, long lines, like a channel um, between between different um, nodes as long as the river extends. So uh, basically, as I'm zooming out. Uh, and I don't want to to calculate uh, to use this diffusion limited aggregates everywhere. Um, I want to <coughs> to have it on large scale. I I can see these large scale artifacts visible here. That uh, one point is here, one point is here, one point is here, one point is here. So uh, this. Uh, these several hundred particles are being added into these points um, and they getting uh, uh, they getting stuck here and now when I am subsplitting each of these uh, these lines are being subsplitted uh, so if I put now let's say four instead of zero, if I put four, these these segments would become much. They would become shorter because it would uh, make one subdivision and another subdivision of these two segments. So it would split four times. Let's go to see. Clean up and generate. So we see that these segments are getting shorter as as before. So yes, and once we put sixty four, we have our original um, our original um, river pattern. So if we click clean up and generate, we getting back to this uh, uh, this nicely wiggling uh, uh, pattern of the whole river. It might be possible to increase it to to even larger values. Let's say one twenty eight, um, and. Uh, but it's getting slower if I am adding more points. So, so let's use 128 to see if... Uh, yeah, so the river looks a little bit different. Mm. And we have um, more of these uh, smaller smaller fluctuations in, 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 uh, inside the small scale. So at at some point it's not reasonable to add any more because uh, these these small fluctuations become some uh, becomes practically invisible and they do not add a lot of um, a lot of visual effect into the river. So I usually use sixty four here. So that basically. Um, concludes um, my river preview um, so rivers finally are added in um, your TS toolkit um, and in future they will be used to um, to separate different parts of the maps uh, and allow player to build bridges and uh, to uh, maybe to build stories and so on so, thanks for watching and see you next time.